There has been some questions on the channel about uh, Mori Seiki and Alex or DMG Mori. I don't know really what uh, I talked about in the first videos when I got it, so we'll just start from the beginning. <coughs> this is uh, really a um, Mori Seiki machine. DMG in Germany doesn't have much to do with it. It's an evolution of the Mori Seiki ML. And before that, uh, some even earlier machines. So I don't know which generation it is, but uh, it has been basically the basic machine or the foundations for the machine has been almost the same with the improvements, of course, since the 1980s, maybe before. Anyway. <coughs> Um, as you probably know, I had the uh, MESEC before, Quick Turn Smart 200M. Uh, it was a nice machine, but it um, didn't have a Y axis, and it didn't have a sub spindle. And, um, that was basically two things it was missing. <coughs> and, uh, Conversational control in the milling department was yeah, it works, but uh, it's a bit limited. The smart control, anyway, uh, it was the y axis I wanted. Uh, that's the main reason for selling the MESAC and buying this machine. So, this has uh, y axis and uh, some spindle. And, uh, otherwise, it's uh, about the same size, size as the MESEC, probably a little bit uh, more distance between the centers, depending on what sort of center you use. Uh, but it's basically in the same size 8 inch chuck on the uh, main spin and 6 inch on the sub. <coughs> and, uh, uh, the, uh, the turret. A revolver, as we say, um, is bigger than on the MESEC. <coughs> it's, um, I can't exactly remember how much it bigger it is now, but from uh, the center of the boring bar to the center of the boring bar on the other side of the turret, it's probably four inches bigger or something, and it makes for much more truck clearance. Uh, other than that, the dif differences are the MESAC was uh, um, or this one is a uh, weigh machine, so you don't have any roller weights except on the sub spin, that's the only uh, one that uh, runs on roller guides. All the other axes are weights ground waste with the third side or something on the upper surface, I suppose. I think you can see, maybe it will uh, walk around a little closer afterwards. The x-axis is open to the elements, so to speak, there, and the y-axis too. It's a compound y-axis, so to make a real y movement, so up and down that way. And the X and Y axis moves at the same time. And the sex set uh, ways are of course ways to not linear guides. I guess that's the basic uh, difference. Of course the control is much more there are many more uh, turning cycles and a lot more uh, milling cycles on this control than, than on the MESAC. We can look at that a little bit too. Anyway, we can first go around to the back and have a look there. Here's the top of the machine. Uh, 
this is the <coughs> motor for the y-axis um, uh, down there somewhere is the motor for the x-axis and there is the x-axis scale this is, it's an option with the full loop feedback or whatever it's called on the x-axis you can get it on all the axis but I said the axis, axis was the most important <coughs> there, there and down there are the set ways and covers and uh, yeah, down there is just wire and this is the control cabinet to the left here is the cooler the, um, the machine has coolant running through the bed so things doesn't expand as uh, it will heat up during the day so it basically doesn't heat up there's the hydraulic unit Electric cabinet again. Okay, we're looking at the control now. Uh, maybe we should start with uh, something else. This is the apps. Stupid apps. Anyway. There are a lot of stuff here that I don't use, which maybe or probably is useful for people running a big shop with multiple machines, like job manager and scheduler and everything. Um, it's not so interesting. It's uh, tool handling. You can see the different tools I have there, so anyway, you can look at that in the control. That's the main thing. Here are technology cycles. That's basically options you can purchase. Like gear hubbing, skiving, eccentric turning, multi-treading, uh, alternating speed. They use useful for if you are shatter. Cat cam view, you can view the uh, either it's you can think I think you can view uh, um, the screen on the computer from the machine. Tech calculator, that's kind of useful. Building, milling, turning, fits and treads and typing at the other screen down here so you can get all the info there and documents that's user manuals and stuff and uh, never use any of this anyway this is the most interesting thing. <coughs> so here you have work offsets and tool offsets. And here at coordinates you have uh, usually three there when you're running. Some machine settings you can basically move things around here but uh, usually I have it uh, like this almost. And here are uh, when you're running programs, you see speeds and feeds you're running. And here's the programming thing. You can have that all over the screen too, but then uh, there's some bug with the... Uh, I can't remember. I think it doesn't work properly. Uh, maybe it's the tool setup that doesn't work, work properly. Anyway, it's big enough. So you have uh, your different programs here. I have uh, made a few filters. There aren't really folders, there are filters. So up here you have all uh, your programs. And here I have uh, 
Det var er et filter that I called working, that's the stuff I'm working on, or that I'm going to working on, stuff I've finished, and things I'm going to give price on, stuff there, and some machine stuff, like uh, bar pulling sub-program, and the spindle reload program, I don't need that, of course, because you're only supposed to run that machine has been sitting for weeks or months and a turret teach program that's basically just indexes the turret while you have the turret teaching enabled so you can uh, put the maximum rotation speed on the turret um, let's see we have uh, some test programs here uh, I can't remember what that is yeah. You can see the basic layout of the program here from the side, so you see the turning operations. We can look at that one maybe, that's very simple. Or it was. Uh, I think we'll go back there. Um, to test again. You click the plus to make a program and then just UPS file and then you have a new file and then you just go on to this keyboard here on the over screen. I don't know how far we have come to the There, and then you hit that one to go into the editor, and then you get into the just uh, basic G code editor. Pro Pro process view. You have to press it too hard for my liking on the screen, but anyway, now you're into the basic programming and the VPS and visual programming system, or whatever it's called. The first thing you do is set common settings, work material, size, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. You can look more at the programming if people are interested. You can look a little bit at the lower screen too. Yes. So you have air blow and coolant and shit conveyor and work on the unloader and stuff like that. And here you have the modes auto, MDI, jog, and zero return. And here you can spin the clamp and run the spindle and run everything. And Here's the turret indexing. There's X and Y and set movements. Here are overrides that are set now. And down there you have the usual buttons. Cycle start stop and uh, rapid override, feed override and the jog handle. Suppose you can see uh, all the interesting pieces inside here. That pillow which doesn't have doors on it now, it's only in the way. Main spindle needs some soft doors on it and a turret. And you can see the weights in here too. It's supposed. Um, the turret is just uh, loaded up for some random job center right now. I have the bar puller in position 1 and the rougher in position 2, cut up in position 3, and the finishing tool outside in 4. And after that, it's, those are just 1 to 4 is uh, basically always sitting there. And maybe I will change out number 4 for a V insert instead of a V sometimes. 
but the low the fuels are changing all the time. Mm, and here inside the tools up there for the subscreen and the manual tools up there for the main screen one. Anyway, if uh, people want to know things, uh, please uh, ask the questions in the comments fields and we'll do another video where I answer all the questions. Um, people who want to look at the programming in more detail can ask about that too. And we'll do a little more, more on that. And if people want to look at specific apps, we can do that. Anyway, that will be all for this video.